Hey there, and welcome to our top tips video on Soundtrap. Hopefully there's some things here that you haven't seen before or you haven't discovered, so you can add them to your tracks or help it for your workflow. So let's have a look. The first top tip that I've got here is organizing your tracks. Now, once your songs start to get pretty big with lots of tracks, you're gonna to start to lose track of what is what. So it's really important right from the start that you start a system that you have in place. Maybe it's a system that you carry across lots of different songs or maybe just for one song, but a system that you've got in place so you know exactly what is what. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Here's a song that I've been working on and you can see here that I've got some vocals, I've got some drums, but I've got the original names of the loops so it's hard to know what's what. There's all sorts of different colors and they're all out of order. So when you're putting a song together, you're gonna be having different ideas just kind of thrown in, but it's really important that you try to keep them in some sort of order. So let me show you three things that you can do to keep these tracks in some sort of order. So the first thing that you can do is actually just renaming these. So if I look at the moment, this one's Midnight Backing Voc. Well, what does that mean? That's some vocals, all right? And it's a vocal slice. So what I can do is I can rename that. So if I double click on the title here, it'll actually have a text box. So now I'm gonna call this Vocals and I'm gonna call this uh, Cut To. So now straight away I know exactly what it is and you could also rename it by the three dots here and clicking Rename and it's the same thing. The other thing that you can do to keep it in order is you can actually move the tracks around as well. So I've got another vocals track here. So what I can do is if I click and drag, I can drag it to the top. And then if I renamed it as well, vocals cut one, let me put those in order. And now all of a sudden you can see that the song's starting to make a bit more sense. It's a bit more structured and organized. The third thing that you can do is you can actually recolor them. When you drag a loop in or when you make um, record anything in Soundtrap, it automatically just def uh, goes to a random color. But what you can do is if you go to those three dots again, you can select a color. So let's select yellow. And if I go to my other track as well and go to yellow, so now you can actually see that all my vocal tracks are in yellow. So if I apply those three things to the rest of my tracks, I'm gonna rename them, I'm gonna reorder them, and I'm gonna recolor them. If I do that, my song's gonna be a lot easier to read. Let's have a look. So now you can see I brought a little bit of order to this. I've got all my drums together. You can really clearly see where all the drums are. You can see my vocals. And then I've got a, a, a arpeggio and a bass at the bottom. So I could probably rename them as well, but you can see straight away, it's so much clearer what everything is. The next top tip that I've got for you is how to change the speed of your song. So you might bring in a loop and you might be starting a song, but you might be thinking, oh, it's a little bit fast or it's a bit slow. Let me show you how you can change the whole song to be faster or slower. So if you go down to the bottom here, you can see a number. I've got a 125 at the moment. If I put my mouse over that, it actually comes up with the word tempo. Now the word tempo is the musical word for speed. If I click on that, it shows here some word, uh, some letters BPM. Now BPM is a musical term that stands for beats per minute. So all it means is how many beats are there going to be in a minute? So if you've got 60 as your BPM, that means that there's 60 beats in a minute. And what do we know that as? That's seconds. If we went to 120 BPM, that would be two a second. So you can see that it's just all about maths with minutes and beats. So 125 is just a little bit faster than two beats per second. So let's have a listen to it at that 125 BPM. <laughs> So what I can do here is I wanna make my song just a little bit faster. So I'm gonna take a guess here. I'm gonna go maybe 140. And you can see at the top here, it actually says, please enter a value between 30 and 300 BPM. Now they're pretty extreme. I'd suggest most songs are kind of between 60-ish BPM to kind of 100, 150-ish. There's songs that are faster and slower than that, but really they're the main numbers that you're gonna to wanna to, to play around with. And you can hear in the background that tapping, that's automatically added by Soundtrap that actually plays the new BPM for you so you can get an idea. So if I push confirm, it's now gonna start adjusting it. So yes, because it's audio, it needs to adjust. Sometimes this is gonna take a little while, could take 40 seconds, 10 seconds. Oh, that was a really quick one. Last time I did that, it took about a minute and a half. 
And now that it's at that 140 BPM, let's have a listen to what that sounds like. So you can hear there that now it's a lot faster. So that gives you a lot more control. And what you could also do is rather than putting a number in, if you can hear in your head what sort of BPM you want, you can actually just tick it in, click it in here. So if I click on this button, you can hear after four counts, it figures it out and it actually tells you that I've clicked the 86 BPM and then I could push confirm. So you can do it through that way as well. My next top tip for you guys is how to reverse audio. Now this doesn't work on MIDI tracks. If you don't know what I mean, don't worry about it. But any audio tracks that you have in here, and most loops are audio tracks, you can reverse them. So let me show you what I mean. To go to reverse, I'm gonna put my mouse over the drums here and let me just solo it. I'm gonna put my mouse over and see this edit button here. So if you click on that, you can actually get to reverse. Now, let me just show you a little, uh, it's not really a bug, but just a feature. If I put my mouse over a smaller one, like over here, see how that button doesn't come up? I'm assuming that's because there's not really enough space for it, okay? So the best solution is just to zoom in, and then once it becomes a bit bigger, then the edit button will be there, all right? So let's go back to the drums here. If I go edit, and reverse. Let's have a listen to what that sounds like. So you can hear that sounds pretty good, but if I play that with the song, it sounds okay, but after a while, that's gonna to start to feel a bit stale and it's it doesn't have a definite beat because it's in reverse. So you wanna use it more as a little bit of interest uh, rather than an ongoing idea. So I'm just gonna reverse that back. So I could just push reverse again, but I'm gonna push uh, Command Z um, on a Mac, so I'm using Command, or if you're on PC, you use Control. So I'm just gonna go back, good, and let's have a listen to it now. Yeah, so now it's back. So let me just quickly show you a good way that you could use reverse. So if you have a look at the song here, you can see here that uh, my vocals starts here, then there's a little bit more here, but then in this bar 12 region, I don't really have anything uh, kind of in this little section here in the song, but I still want a bit of inter interest. So what I can do is I'm gonna take the drums, I'm gonna split it, so I'm gonna go Command E, and now I've got that as its own little region. And now I'm going to reverse just that little section here. So now that that's reversed, let's just have a listen to it from here. So you can hear that just brings a bit more interest to it. And it just sounds a little bit messy. So I'm just going to get rid of that last bit here. Let's have a listen to what that sounds like. Yeah, so I could spend a little bit more time cleaning that up, but you can see that concept there of just putting a little bit in reverse just makes it sound a bit more interesting. And this is something that DJs do a lot as well because it's very easy for them to play a song in reverse. So it's a nice little effect that you can add. I wouldn't have add it all the time, but if you add it sometimes, it's just gonna make your song sound a lot more interesting. Our next top tip that I've got for you is how to figure out what on earth is going on with solo and muting. Now you've got these buttons over here, the solo button, which means you'll only hear that instrument and it mutes all the other ones. And then you can actually just mute an instrument straight away if you click on it. However, what happens is if you solo a couple of instruments and then you are, uh, you can mute a couple. After a while, you kind of lose track of what you were pushing and it's very easy to get lost and then if I'm clicking around, I've got no idea how to kind of reverse all this and put it back to the way that it was. So what you can actually do is if you hold, now I'm on a Mac, so if you hold the command key down or if you're on Windows, you'd be holding a control key down. If you hold that button down, then click on either of these at the top, if you click a couple of times, so it's not a really clean trick, but if you click a couple of times, you're gonna fix the problem. Let me show you. So it's a bit, it's a big mess here. I can't really unwind it. I'm gonna click on the headphones up here. I'm holding the command key down. I'm clicking. There you go, I've unmuted all those. And then if I click at the top here and click with the command key. So two clicks and that fixed it. And all of a sudden I've got all my tracks back, 
okay? So to fix a problem, if you've been soloing and muting lots of tracks and you've got no idea what is what anymore, hold that command key down or that control key down, then click on the so the headphones. You might have to click twice or a couple of times. Click on the mute button. If you click both of those a couple of times, you're gonna fix all your problems. And the last top tip that I wanna share with you is how to share a song with somebody who doesn't have Soundtrap. Now, the share feature is a feature I absolutely love in Soundtrap, but that's only useful if you're sharing with people who have Soundtrap. If you want to share with your friends and family that don't have Soundtrap or you want to be able to upload a song to YouTube or to Spotify or whatever, uh, what you can do is you can go to File and if you go to Export and what that's going to do is it's going to allow you to save it as an MP3 or a WAV file. So that way you've got a standalone uh, little track that you can share, you can email or whatever and that's going to allow you to share your music in a really easy way rather than trying to share it through Soundtrap. So there you have it, my friends. There are five top tips on Soundtrap. Hopefully, there's something in there that you didn't know that you can add to the skills when you're using Soundtrap. And thanks for watching another Soundtrap walkthrough. If you enjoyed this video, you can like and subscribe. And why not check out some of our other Soundtrap walkthrough videos?